The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning and welcome to our service of worship. We're grateful that you have gathered in the comfort of your own home and answered God's call to worship with us this morning here at Commerce Presbyterian Church. I'm Jeff Kane, the pastor here. Accompanying me with the worship service this morning is Mr. Eric Newell, our music director and instrumentalist. We're grateful that you have gathered this morning. I do have a few announcements that I would like to share with you this morning. The flowers in the sanctuary are placed to the glory of Almighty God and in honor of Bo Cain's birthday given by the Cains. Folks, you may have noticed uh, on a video last night that we posted on our Facebook page that we placed yellow ribbons at, uh, on our facility sign here at Commerce Presbyterian Church in honor of us missing you gathered here in the Lord's house on Sunday mornings. And if the Holy Spirit so moves you, we have a host of trees here in our front yard. And if, the, if it so moves you to come and wrap a yellow ribbon around one of our trees, please do so, because we are indeed missing you. And I say that to say this, folks, that please let us not get complacent. I know that we're getting impatient with uh, staying at home and our social distancing and uh, uh, washing our hands, but let us please dig deep that we do need to continue this good fight against the corona, corona virus that we continue to move forward uh, in our effort in fighting back that each day we get closer to a vaccine and that we listen to our government leaders uh, and our uh, uh, leaders both at the national and at the state level so please let's not get complacent that we continue to move forward Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and come to God with a thankful heart.
Behold, God has opened to us the gates of righteousness that we may enter through them. Confident in God's love, let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you did act in the darkness of Easter morning. And eternal life was called forth from death. The miracle of your way is beyond our understanding, but open it to our faith. Forgive the hardiness of our hearts whereby we frustrate your will. Forgive our willingness to trust only in human insight and strength. Scatter the darkness of sin within us, even as you scattered the night by the dawning of Easter's light. Enable us to walk anew by the power of the resurrection. Hear our prayer through Christ, the risen Lord. Friends, Almighty God is our refuge, our strength, and he will not abandon us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Friends, having received the peace of Jesus Christ, let us share that same peace with one another, those that are sitting with you in the comfort of your home. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Friends, pray with me. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon the reading of your word, that it may serve to show us the path of life, and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Amen. 
Friends, if you have your Bibles there with you, I'd encourage you to open them to our Old Testament reading this morning from the book of Psalms, Psalm 16. Let us hear the word of God as David reminds us of the benefits, both the now and the future, of a life lived in following in the path of Almighty God. Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows, their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And if you'll turn over to our New Testament reading from the Gospel according to John chapter 20, Verses 19 through 31. Let us again hear God's word as Jesus appears to his disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may live life in his name. Friends, here ends our lessons. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In many parts of the Christian world today, this Sunday is unofficially given the name of Low Sunday. We've speak, spoken of this before. Now, despite this dubious distinction to which seasoned worship leaders and worshipers will have an appreciation for, this Sunday is actually known as the second Sunday after the resurrection of our Lord.
and it's designed to be a continuation of the wonderful celebration we all experienced last Sunday, Easter Sunday. Now, the Easter lilies that adorned the sanctuary last week have all been distributed. Were we able to gather together this morning in God's house, we would have probably seen fewer folks, less fanfare. You know, I often compare this Sunday, low Sunday, to showing up at a party after most folks have already started to leave, and you get to hear from those remaining what a great time you missed. All because you missed the official start time. However, let's not forget, all of us miss the Easter celebration by nothing more than 2,000 years. You see, folks, our lives have never been lived at any other time other than the time after Easter. And so, for most of us, every Sunday is more likely to be like the Sunday after Easter. We can listen to the gospel accounts over and over again, but obviously we were not there. We did not see, we didn't touch, we didn't smell, and here for ourselves. But I digress. Now, just a very short week ago, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they arrived at the tomb as the sun was rising in the east and, and found the huge stone that had been rolled away and the body of Jesus was missing. They both stood there weeping when a, a man greeted them. Now, had we gone back in our reading from John's Gospel Day in chapter 20 and read verse 15, Mary thought this man was the gardener. But when this man called her by name, she turned toward him and recognized that it was Jesus Christ. Now, it was in the evening when Jesus appeared to his disciples in the upper room. He stands there among them and he declares, peace be with you. He then shows them his hands and his side and he says again to them, peace be with you. Now, can you imagine the disciples' state of mind was like at that time? To begin with, they're, they're meeting behind closed and locked doors for fear of the authorities. Their whole life had just imploded with the death of Jesus. They're terrified. You see, for three years, Jesus has been with these men. He's been their strength, the one that's been providing them with courage and guidance. The disciples felt safe and secure when they were with Jesus. They were at peace when listening to his words. However, once Jesus took his final breath, it seemed like the disciples lost all of their faith and their courage as well. They were probably very confused and could not understand why all this was happening. And if anything, they were probably scared to death. And the last thing that they wanted to hear were words of peace. Then as John's story records, Jesus steps in and he, he breathes over their friends and gives them renewed life with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In essence, Jesus is saying, here, take it. Take it and allow it to live in your hearts. Feel my presence once again in your life for I'm still with you. Let it remove your fears and once again fill it with So that night in the upper room, the disciples once again felt Jesus' presence and were blanketed in his peace. That night in the upper room, the disciples gained renewed faith in Jesus, restored courage to answer his call, to spread the good news, reach out to those in need, and make disciples of those that they would meet. However, all the disciples were gathered that night in the upper room. You see, Thomas wasn't part of the gathering. He missed it all, and to this day, where he was and what he was doing is still not known. Did Thomas go into hiding for fear that he would be the next one to be crucified? Was he in such grief over Jesus' death that he just wanted to be alone? Or did he just immediately go back to work? 
to Thomas finally did show up, the others were overjoyed and grateful to see him. They immediately shared with Thomas what they had seen, that they had seen the Lord. But as our scripture points out, Thomas wasn't buying it. In fact, unless he saw Jesus' wounds and was able to put his hand in Jesus' side, he wasn't believing the disciples' claim. Ever since Thomas' famous no-show, he's carried the label of the doubter. Now, whether it was justified or not, Maybe we all could take a few lessons from Thomas and his doubting attitude that he displayed that night in the upper room. The question is, did Thomas doubt the resurrection of Jesus, or did he doubt the witnessing words of the disciples? Well, we really don't know. In fact, I would argue that Thomas was doubtful of what the disciples were saying to him, much like the disciples were doubtful when the two Marys returned to them when Jesus had been raised from the dead. Referring to Luke chapter 24, verse 11, they, the two Marys, told the apostles what had happened, but the story sounded like nonsense, so they didn't believe it. And there was no doubting the disciple label put there. Folks, Thomas was a loyal disciple of Jesus. Just a very few weeks ago, we learned that Jesus traveled to Bethany and performed the miracle that raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, you remember that Bethany was only a few miles from Jerusalem. And the last time that Jesus was in Jerusalem, he had so upset the Jewish leadership that they had threatened to kill him. Certainly, Jesus would not get a warm welcome. The disciples begged him not to go, that he would certainly be killed. But the one disciple who stood with Jesus and encouraged the others to go and possibly die with him was Thomas. You see, folks, Thomas was anything but compromising in his faith in Jesus. Thomas believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Thomas was willing to give up his life. You see, he had to in order for Jesus to complete his mission. I don't think Thomas was asking for any special treatment when he said he needed to see for himself. I think, like most of us, he just wanted to receive equal treatment. Since Jesus showed himself, his hands and his side to the other disciples, why should Thomas be any different? And don't we all want to see for ourselves and experience God's love up close and personal rather than riding on the coattails of someone else's faith? We want our own encounters with the risen Lord. And so my prayer is that each of us, you and me, pursue ways in which our triune God makes himself known to us and invites us to walk with him, to know him as our faith journey unfolds. Thomas wanted up close and firsthand faith, and why shouldn't we? Now, about this label of this doubting Thomas, don't we all carry a little doubt with us? Certainly the older we get, the more skeptical we get. Hey, honey, did you turn off the coffee pot and turn down the heat? Uh-huh. Are you sure? You know, good, honest doubt and questions, especially when we don't understand, are critical to contributing to our growth in our faith journey. Our God is sovereign, and I think he's up to the task of embracing our peculiarities, certainly wise enough to provide answers to our questions, and he has enough love to win over our doubtfulness, our immaturity, and certainly our sinfulness. Now, Thomas was not PC, you know, politically correct. He showed tremendous courage as he stepped out from the crowd, as we so often speak of. He spoke what was on his mind. Going to John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 2 through 4, records the events right before Jesus' arrest. Here's what Jesus had to say, and I'm paraphrasing here. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come and get you. You know where I'm going and how to get there. Well, friends, the disciples had no clue where Jesus was going or how to get there, but they sat there acknowledging as if they did. Everyone except Thomas 
You see, Thomas was the one who interrupted Jesus and asked the question, Lord, we don't know. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Thomas was not meaning any offense, but rather pretty bold of Thomas, and a very valuable lesson for us folks. And so we have to ask ourselves, how are we going to learn unless we ask questions? How are we going to grow in our faith unless we are willing to be open and honest about those things that we don't understand? You see, the good news, folks, is a week later, Jesus came back. And this time, he came back to meet with Thomas. He called Thomas out and invited him to, hey, take a look at my hand, take a look at my side. Friends, that's all it took. Thomas believed. He could see for himself. Jesus was alive. Jesus was well. And Thomas proclaimed, my Lord and my God. Folks, Jesus returns to promise us our resurrection. He returns to make us one with God and make us witnesses for reconciliation in the world. We can meet Jesus in a multitude of ways. We can meet Jesus in Scripture. We can meet Jesus in the sacraments. We can meet Jesus in the love we show to Him and the love we show to our neighbors. We meet Jesus at times when we least expect it. And so we have to ask ourselves, will we welcome Him? Will we trust Him? You know, whatever we think about Thomas and the, the moniker that we tagged him with, folks, when the going got tough, Thomas was there. And he was willing to die for Jesus' sake. He was willing to ask the tough questions in order to know the truth. And when Jesus came back to see him, he had the courage to put aside his disbelief, his doubt, and profess Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So maybe, just maybe, Thomas is one we could all strive to be more like, honest about our doubts, and strong in our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,
hearts and minds to go to God in prayer. Ken Durrell, good news, will not require surgery on his fractured shoulder. He's resting comfortably at home. Linda Potts will not require surgery on her fractured wrist. Robert Ellis continues his uh, recovery on his broken wrist, is resting comfortably at home as well. And Donna Sosby, we removed the ramp on Thursday and she's in a boot and is moving around. She's no longer on her scooter. So again, answered prayers for all of our folks. And uh, I appreciate those unsung heroes out there that continue to reach out with food for our folks. And uh, folks, again, as I reiterated in my welcoming, that uh, we just continue to move forward with uh, the crisis that we are in. We are all in this together, and that we continue to be persistent in following our guidelines, patient in what we are doing, and prayerful at all times. Because as we profess and live out our faith in God, we can have comfort and hope for the future. Jesus' death on the cross was for us, folks. His promises to return is for us, so we can feel confident about our future as we continue to move forward. So friends, for the next few minutes, let's put aside those things that have taken our eye off of God and instead unite our hearts and minds together as we talk to God. The Lord is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to come together and worship you. Lord, we pray for the church throughout the world that as we celebrate the great 50 days of Easter, that we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for your congregation at Commerce Presbyterian Church, that we recognize the risen Christ in word and sacrament and lead your church with wisdom, humility, and courage. Lord, we pray for the governments in the world and its leaders, that they may resist the corruption of sin and serve the common good. We pray for your creation, that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. Lord, hear our prayer for the poor and the stranger, receive a place of refuge and hope, that the church may offer the hospitality the first disciple offered to Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Mighty God, we pray for the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. We pray for our neighbors that we may live together in peace and share in our resources. Lord, we pray for those who protect and defend us, our men and women in uniform, both military and first responders. We pray for all of our medical personnel, the doctors, nurses, and staff who stand watch and are treating the COVID-19 patients. Lord, may they hear your voice and feel your embrace. May our country still stand strong we continue to fight the good fight against this virus. May we dig deep, dig deep in patience and persistence and prayerful at all times. May we not get complacent in what we're doing and we continue to move forward knowing that you walk with us. May our focus in you never wane. We pray for the comfort of those who are mourning the loss of loved ones hear your voice and feel your touch during this very difficult and stressful time. Almighty God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you broke the power of death. You opened the gates to eternal life. Lord, receive these prayers we offer and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Use each of us for the sake of the gospel of our resurrected Lord. Things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has given us life in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In gratitude, let us offer our hearts and the fruit of our labor to God's service with our tithes and our offerings. God who loves and resurrects us give us a goodly portion 
of the Holy Spirit and new birth into a living hope. And until we meet again, may the peace of Jesus Christ be with each of you this day and every day.